Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another video, and it is Wednesday, my dudes. This is normally where I talk about my first thoughts and initial impressions on an Epic 7 character. But they kind of dumped, you know, the whole Overlord collab yesterday on a Tuesday, and, well, we had to make three videos on it. So if you haven't already seen my thoughts on Ainz, Albedo, and Shaltier, feel free to check those out. Uh, and while you're there, leave it a like, as well as leave a like on this video. It does really help me out here a ton. It is the nicest thing you can do for a content creator. But yeah, amongst all that, we got two new exclusive equipments as well for Teyu and Arya, and I think they're really good. So I want to talk about them, and that's the premise of the video. You probably already know that because, well, you looked at the title of the video and you saw the thumbnail. So yeah, Teyu and Arya, uh, two characters that surprisingly the other day when I was streaming Persona, uh, people were asking, what would I want to see in an exclusive equipment? Which characters? And the two that I picked were Teyu and Arya, and lo and behold, here we are. So let's take a look at uh, Teyu first, but then we'll talk about Arya. So Teyu got Crown of Pyrokinesis once again, never beating the allegations that he's not secretly a fire unit. Um, for those of you guys who are newer, uh, Teyu just screams, like radiates, that he is a fire character, but they needed an answer to Hua Yong before they nerfed her, so... A lot of people think in the last, like, you know, in the 11th hour, they converted this man into an ice hero. Uh, and him getting crown of pyrokinesis is, like, further proof of, like, yeah, you're never beating the allegations. It gives attack percentage, which is actually both kind of good and bad, right? <clears throat> so if we look at his stats, he has uh, 1,039 attack. So it's quite low. He could definitely use some more damage uh, in the kit. But 14% uh, of this is not as impactful as getting, like, 14% on a character like Sermia, who's in, like, the 1300 range, right? So, um, it's not the most impactful, but we'll take it. The thing is that a lot of these characters, or, like, these uh, choices are pretty good. So, the first one is on Full Moon Slash. So, if you don't know, here's Full Moon Slash. Attacks the enemy with a spear and increases the combat readiness of Teyu by 15%. Damage dealt increases proportional to his speed. I believe it's like 0.0065% of his speed, so it's not really great speed scaling. Uh, when the caster is enraged, activates Tidal Crash as an extra attack. Tidal Crash can only be activated once per turn during the caster's turn. Tidal Crash attacks the enemy by slashing downwards with a spear. Damage dealt increases proportional to caster speed. It has the same speed scaling as far as I'm aware. I believe that the attacks are 1x and 1.3x respectively. Um... <clears throat> So it does some pretty decent damage, right? It's a pretty potent 1-2 combo. So you get 20% combat readiness on this. This one, not super great. But the other two are really good, in my opinion. So next we have Azure Waves of the Ocean. Increases the combat radius of the caster by 15% after an enemy uses a non-attack skill. This is actually what we were looking for the entire time on this character. He didn't have innate... CR push when somebody uses a non-attack skill, like Politis does, like Selene does, right? He had it on his artifact, but he didn't naturally have it on the character. So now, with the combination of the artifact and this, I believe it's 30%. Uh, I'll put it up in post what it actually is. I don't actually have the artifact uh, up on me. But uh, yeah, pretty good. This is what we were looking for the entire time. If you press a non-attack skill, and I'm on you know, his uh, spear artifact and get the CR push naturally on the passive, he actually feels like he punishes you. Because the thing is, right now, how it works is you press a button against Selene, somebody dies. You press a button against Politis, people could either die or get stunned. You press a button against Teyu, nothing happens. He just gets enraged in the skill nullifier. So that's like, the threat of that is not really... That's scary, especially if you win the fight in a hurry. Because once Teyu's actually enraged, like once you press the button, he becomes enraged. He's actually really scary. Because again, Full Moon Slash does pretty good damage, right? It can kill a lot of squishies outright in one hit if you actually are enraged. Now, we move on to the third option here, which is on Tornado Sweep. Which if you don't know, I will jump over here real fast so you can see. Um... In case you didn't know, by the way, Skill Nullifier, like I said, for Azure Waves. But here's Tornado Sweep. It's an AoE attack that dispels all buffs from all enemies, already pretty good, and increases the skill cooldown of the target that has the highest attack by one turn twice. So it pushes back 
in this case, Hua Young is what it was designed for. It pushes back that cooldown twice. Increases the attack and speed of the caster for two turns. When the caster is in rage, so if they press the button, ignores effect resistance. Tornado Sweep is actually a really powerful move. If you recall, a couple seasons back, it's probably been about a year or so at this point, when Aria was being played as like a last pick pretty heavily, Teyu was a really good option. And people would let him through because, well, they don't really respect Teyu because, well, he's Teyu, right? Now, if Aria presses the button, then you become enraged because it's a non-attack skill. And then you just tornado sweep and you just strip all of the buffs off of Aria and her team. And she's just a sitting duck and can't really do anything. So Tornado Sweep was already very powerful. It's just you needed to have actually somebody give you Enrage, right? Now, if you look here, the exclusive equipment increases the school uh, skill cooldowns of all enemies except the target with the highest attack by one turn when you're using Tornado Sweep. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You can let me know down in the comments below. But my interpretation is that this is not a replacement effect. That is, this replaces the uh, cooldown of Tornado Sweep. But... It increases the cooldowns of everyone by one turn. And then the highest attack uh, person on the team gets it one turn twice. So essentially, Tornado Sweep becomes Lua S3. But it does damage and it strips more buffs. And it's attached to a character that actually does real damage. So, yeah. Yeah. So the only problem at this point, right, with Teyu is um, how do we get enraged, right? Because like if they don't press the button, then maybe we might uh, we might not get the full value, right? We don't get the dunk off of Full Moon Slash. We don't get the ignore ER on Tornado Sweep. Yeah, new, new five star C Phantom Politis. Uh, wonder what this character does. Oh oh oh, right, I forgot. Uh, gives enrage to the team. Which, by the way, this is still a really funny skill to me because it's like you think about the other S3s. Like, I've had time to think about this. I know somebody made a meme. I'll, I'll put the meme up on the screen for you guys to be able to see. But, uh, yeah, like, you think about other S3s in the game, right? So, for honor, Conqueror Lewis S3, it inspires the troops. It invigorates them, which is why they get the attack and defense buff, right? You think about, like, uh, Soul Weavers. They use, like, magic and stuff to give buffs. And then you think about this one where Politus is just like, hey, you want to dance with me? And then her team is like, I'm mad. I'm really, really mad. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Teyu's probably a pretty good unit. I'm going to let you know now. I'm going to shoot my shot and say that after this exclusive equipment and after Politus' release, Teyu is actually going to be a unit that you might see on ladder. Uh, I really do think he's pretty good. He's in a pretty good spot now, right? As for which exclusive equipment, that remains to be seen. I'm probably going with the S2. Because in my opinion, this was always the thing that the character was missing. But I could see a case for a very fast Heyu on Tornado Sweep, right? So if you have Politus, you go Politus S3. And then you get enraged, and then you just tornado sweep, and you proceed to just out-tempo the opponent from there. So one of these, I think, is going to be pretty good. And again, it remains to be seen. S2 is the safe bet, but S3 is, I think, the much more dangerous, risky bet that might end up making Teyu uh, a pretty good complement to uh, ML Politis. Which, by the way, good luck on your pulls if you're pulling for her tomorrow. So finally, then, we are going to come to Arya, right? And I think Arya's is also quite a good exclusive equipment. So she gets Prophet Shaw, which gives 16% effect resistance, which is huge. If you watched how to play Arya, you know that effect resistance is a huge bottleneck for the lifesteal build on this character, right? So that is obviously uh, a welcome change. And also the free artifact from the Overlord Club. I did not mention it in the Ainz video, uh, Staff of Ainz Ulgon is actually something that's very good on Aria. It gives a bunch of effectiveness and ER, which means that, well, you don't have to give her your Bastion of Hope anymore. You can actually just give her Staff of Ein Zolgun, and you'll be fine. So, Aria definitely got some new toys that make it significantly easier to build the character. Now, if we take a look at 
what her exclusive equipments get. There's Shadow Call gets 10% extra damage. In case you don't remember, Shadow Call is obviously the S1. This is the thing that you counter with when you get the counter buff from the Umbral Hour, right? So getting more damage on this is good because more damage translates to more lifesteal if you were on that build, right? Then we have Guide of Darkness. Increases the damage dealt by Dark Shadow Phantom by 10%. Um, This one... Not very good, in my opinion, because, well, any time that you would use Dark Shadow Phantom, right, you probably already used at least one Shadow Call. So that's, uh, you know, why would you not just take the extra damage on all the S1s instead of just the, the one S2? I personally think that this one is a bit better, but uh, who knows? Maybe the math comes out that uh, this one here on Dark Shadow Phantom ends up outpacing it. But either way... If you're on Lifesteal version of Aria, you get two new options to toy around with. Now, the last one here is also on Guide of Darkness, which is the S2. At the start of the first battle, gains one focus. That's a really big deal, right? So, the Umbral Hour here gives three focus when you use it and gives you the counter buff, right? And the defense buff and stealths and barriers everyone else. And when you get to five focus, right? Uh, if you have a 5 focus, you activate Dark Shadow Phantom, which is a AoE attack, dispels 2 buffs, pushes back the enemy team by 30%, scales off of defense, right? All that, that good stuff. Now, this character is a mage, as you can see, which means she can hold, you know, Ancient Book, which her soul burn on Shadow Call is Grand's next return for the cost of 20 souls. So hopefully you see the play now. If you were on an incredibly fast Aria, like a cleave-based Aria, or something like how Elvmage used to play back in the day with like a 272 uh, speed Aria or so, what you can do <clears throat> with this exclusive equipment that gives one focus at the start of the battle is you'll start at one focus, you'll be on book, you'll soul burn and get to two focus off of Shadow Call, and then you'll take an extra turn, you activate the Umbral Hour, which is then... You know, five focus plus the counter buff and defense buff on Arya. This will trigger uh, Dark Shadow Phantom, push back the entire enemy team and strip them of all of their buffs and then allow the rest of your team to tempo out to win the game. Essentially, you can cleave with Arya now with this exclusive equipment. So if you really have always wanted to play Arya, but slow is not your jam, this exclusive equipment, again, turns her into a cleave character. So that's why I kind of wanted to talk about both of these characters because Teyu's on the verge of being a, a potential meta character with ML Politis, right? And again, his biggest weakness has finally been shored up by this exclusive equipment. And then Arya got two new goodies in the form of the EE giving e, uh, ER and then again, Staff giving uh, her another great artifact option. So she got two new options for build paths. And then if you're on... One of the build paths I talked about in how to play Aria, you should be over the moon because you just got more damage or more potential avenues to play the character. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my thoughts on the exclusive equipments. Let me know how you feel about them in the comment section below. If you are watching this on the day that it releases, I will be streaming Epic 7 later on tonight, not only here on this YouTube channel. Uh, but on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv forward slash I am underscore TSU. Hopefully I will see you there. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.